Isn't this nice? We open with commercials. <laughs> I'm very grateful that I was able to ask uh, the director of For Greater Glory a couple of months ago when Ignacio got in touch with me uh, to bring the movie here. And I'm grateful that tonight I'll be able to introduce one of the producers, Pablo, who's one of the most uh, uh, prestigious people in Mexico who put up the funding along with Patrick Slim for Greater Glory. It's a very timely movie, and I'll tell you more about it tonight. I'm Ted Baer, and I'm a producer of uh, movieguide.org. I'm going to tell you a couple of introductory comments just to put you in uh, perspective for what we're doing. From my point of view, this whole plenary session, or this session that we have now, is really about you, everybody in the audience today. You know, Plato once said that when a nation forgets how to tell its stories, it dies. Uh, I've been hearing some great, wonderful lectures today, but lectures are not stories. Jesus told stories. In fact, 95% of the time he was telling stories, not lectures. So what we're here to do, in a way, is to just open up your mind and your heart to the possibility that you can tell great stories, like for a greater glory, that will change the hearts and minds of men. Stories bypass the filters of rejection. They take a little key, and they go to the heart, and they open up the heart, and they help the person to understand a greater truth. And that's why Jesus told stories. I want to open just with a quick prayer and say, uh, Lord, just help this time. Help us to equip everybody in the audience. You've laid great stories on their hearts. Help them to be able to make those stories into movies and videos and uh, YouTubes and other things that can capture the imagination and the hearts and minds of the next generation so that we're not just talking at them with lectures, but so we're bringing them in to the kingdom of God. Now, what we're talking about is redeeming the values of the media. This is what we do. Why did children go from this innocent little baby to somebody who's indulging in sex, drugs, rock and roll, and abortion? It's because they're being fed movies like Knocked Up instead of the Ten Commandments. You'll be seeing more about this as we go along. But what you have to know is the power of the media in our day. The more educated people are, and this is a survey from the Cultural Media Institute, the more educated, the more concerned they are about the values of the media. That means that since you're educated, you're very concerned about it. But the corollary to that is the more intelligent a child is, the more influenced they are by the mass media of entertainment. If you tell me that your child is intelligent, I immediately know that he is getting his scripts of behavior from what he's watching or what she's watching. And as a matter of fact, they go beyond the scripts of behavior. In the Bible, God says in Hebrews, what causes the problems that you have today? The problems that everybody's talked about on all these panels. It's the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Now, what do we mean by that? You know, the thing doesn't start out with the abortion. It starts out with lust. The homosexual relationship doesn't start out with the kissing, the hugging, the sodomy, the perversion. It starts out with lust. Lust is not love. Lust is taking. It's grabbing. It always wants more. Love is giving, sharing. So as you go through this panel, remember, the more intelligent a child is, the more they're going to get their scripts of behavior from what they're watching. How do we deal with this? We need to do two basic things. One is to redeem the media. Because the media is throwing gasoline on the lust. 
And part of redeeming the media is equipping you to make great stories. It's helping Norman and Omar to make great stories. Because when you make great stories, I'm not talking about documentaries, which are just a visual lecture. I'm talking about stories like For Greater Glory. Then you capture the hearts and minds. The second line of change in defense is to teach children to be media wise. I'll talk to you about that tomorrow. We know how, and I've said this at every World Congress, to teach media wisdom to children so that they want to choose the good. Not so you're going thumbs up or thumbs down, not so you're forcing them, but so that they want to. To change the movie industry in Hollywood, we do something very unique. We present this economic analysis. We look at the movie industry as if we're putting them under an MRI or a CAT scan to find out what the weaknesses are and what the strengths. We follow Adam Smith, who said, you look at what succeeds. And surprise, surprise, what succeeds are movies with faith and values. Great movies are great stories well told. And we teach people, even in Hollywood, how to do that. Aristotle said it years ago. Great stories. We'll get into that in a minute. They have a positive worldview because most people have a tough life and they want good to triumph over evil. They don't want the bill collector to get them. They don't want their child to die. They don't want to be sick. And they're spiritually inspiring. In the United States of America last year, the movies that succeeded, in fact, every single year that we've done this since 1991, the movies that average do better at the box office are movies with Christian faith and values. They do three times more box office than pagan movies, and they do many more box office, eight times more than humanist movies. How does that apply to Spain? Well, if you look at Spain, out of the first 10 movies, well, four of them are Movie Guide Award winners. Most of them have Christian elements. Most of them are family friendly. If we look down this list, there's only three out of 10 that we would reject. So the good news is that when people go to vote at the box office, they want family-friendly movies. I had a fun time in Germany at one point because one man who was publishing a German film magazine said, we know that R-rated movies do better, restricted movies. I said, okay, show me your list. Let me go back to the list. And we looked down the top 20 and I said, when do we get to the bad stuff? He was so fed up, he tore up his magazine and left in disgust. Don't buy the lie. God says that the good will rise to the top. Always support the good and help your children to see that that's what they want to support. Movie Guide helps you choose the good. Alexei has licensed it for Russia. Friends have licensed it for Korea, for Japan, for different places. Why? Not because we're doing critiques. We're not critics. We're analysts. We're helping children to develop a biblical worldview so they can choose the good and reject the bad. And movies, since we've been doing this with positive Christian content, I mean Christian content where they mention positively Jesus Christ, faith, Christian faith, I'm going to be very bold about this, have increased from 1% to 57% since we started in 1985. When we started, if you saw a priest in the movie, he usually had a knife in his hand and he was in poltergeist and he was a vicious character. Now priests are performing weddings and funerals and talking about Jesus because we've shown Hollywood that it makes better money at the box office. But there's more at stake than profits. The average child, by the time they're 17 years old, as Alexia said, and several people have quoted our figures, spend 60,000 hours with the media. That's many times more than they spend in school. I was chairman of a department at Berkeley. One of the professors at the University of California got fed up competing with the media, so he just turned on the TV and walked out of his classroom. It's true. It's much more hours than they spend with parents because the state is trying to seize the children. And church, it's 60 times more time they spend with the church. Where do you think they're going to learn? A hundred years ago, they learned from their parents, from watching them in the fields and in the factories and whatever they were watching them do. 
They got their scripts of behavior. Today, they get their scripts of behavior by the mass media of entertainment. As a result, in the United States, 90% of the children are abandoning the Christian faith and values of their parents. We are in cultural, spiritual freefall. That's why I want you to be equipped to take the messages that God has laid on your heart to tell stories that will change the world. During the golden age of Hollywood, when Mr. Smith went to Washington instead of that other guy, and it was a wonderful life, and the bells of St. Mary rang out across the land, during those days, the church was the dominant influence, not because they had censorship. They had no censorship values or rights. All they could do is do what I'm doing now, which is to persuade. And for 33 years, the good triumph. My father was a star in, in Hollywood, Tex Allen. He won the box office award in 36. My mother was a star at MGM. And then for some reason, the church abandoned Hollywood in 1966. The church. A Jewish man who was the head of Paramount Pictures, Sam Engel, said, if you take the salt from the meat, the meat's going to rot. The industry in Hollywood begged the church to stay, but did they stay? They shut down their offices and retreated from the culture because they thought the culture wasn't important, Norman. And, as, and Norman knows this because he's lived through it. So you went from 100% movies that anybody could see of any age, even though some of them had tough topics, Anybody could see them. They didn't have salacious sex. They didn't have salacious violence. To 82% restricted. You went from the greatest story ever told, the Ten Commandments. You went to the first Sex and Satanism film. You went from The Sound of Music to the first X-rated movie. In three years, because the church left the mission field, the culture started to collapse. As a result, illegitimate birth rates, which have been flat all around the world, now fueled by the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh, increased dramatically. Look at this. Italy, Spain, Germany, Ireland, you're paying for this. Taxpayers in the United States, every taxpayer has a bill of $49,000 for the illicit cultural activities that are occurring because we've had a collapse of culture. So if you don't care what anybody does, it's costing you a lot of money. The answer to this is love. And how do we do that? We teach our children to be culture-wise. We teach them exactly what I'm going to tell you tomorrow. We give them tools so that they can choose the good and reject the bad. And then we do this report in Hollywood. We give an award. Norman just won our $100,000 Epiphany Prize. People say $100,000 isn't it enough. Norman will probably tell you that it was a great blessing. In fact, every Hollywood executive producer has fought to get this prize. Stan Lee, who did Marvel, said, I want to win the Epiphany Prize by putting more Christian faith in my next movie. So he took one little Lord's Prayer and turned it into two Hail Marys and a Lord's Prayer. And I said, Stan, you've got to do more than that. You've got to make the whole movie Christian. And he's been fighting to do that for a long time. We also give the report to the entertainment industry, and we teach people how to make movies that are successful. This book is taken from the head of Disney, from the head of Warner Brothers. It is the tips from the people who are the most successful on how to succeed by telling great stories and I always think that I'm going to get Christians to come to my class. Instead, I got a producer who's been there for 25 years. I got a guy from Facebook who was one of the four wealthiest men on Facebook making billions of dollars and getting billions of hits. And I'm wondering, why don't the Christians want to tell their story? Why don't the people of faith and values want to tell their stories? Why don't they want to support the people who can tell their stories? It's a mystery to me of why you guys aren't all signed up, go back, buy the book, change your life, and take your documentaries and your boring lectures, which I love, and turn them into great stories. Now, let me look at this. What we need is love. I'm supercharged about changing the industry, and I'm supercharged about helping you. 
But love is patient. Love is kind. Love keeps no account of wrongs. We're going to start with a clean slate right now as I introduce, introduce the panel. And the place you find love is God, is Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him will have eternal life. So if we want to change the industry, we have to change ourselves. I grew up in the entertainment industry. I just showed you pictures of my parents. I was a pagan until I was 28 years old. Probably I did things that you did. I did worse. And God changed my heart. We have to love others enough to change the heart. So what you do today will help determine what Hollywood makes for the next generation. And I want to see you making a difference. I want all of you to support Norman, to support Omar, and I want all of you to get your stories that God has laid on your heart into a dramatic format that can change people's lives, including Alan, who's sitting over there. This is your chance. I now want to introduce one of my favorite people, Norman Stone. He made a couple of my favorite movies. Years ago, he made a television movie called Shadowlands about C.S. Lewis. They remade it. It was never as good as what Norman did. He is a consummate artist of portraying life in a visual form. Walt Disney, when he made movies, made movies without dialogue, and then he only added dialogue when it worked. And I'm, that's why I shouldn't be talking. I should just be doing visual, like you did in your talk. And Norman does that beautifully. He just did a documentary, and I'm no, usually not big on documentaries, which won our $100,000 Epiphany Prize. Let me introduce you to a great filmmaker, a man who knows how to make movies so that you can get inspired to change the world by making movies about the true, the good, and the beautiful, that when the kids are watching their 60,000 hours of media and only spending 800 hours in church, they will see stories that transform them into people of faith and values. Norman, can you come up and talk? God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs>